All right, guys, so we have made it to the paint stage. Um, if you guys watched the last video, I did all of the prep work on this. Everything is basically in gray scotch bright and 600 grit. Um, I am going to spray sealer on the hood, all four doors, my little quarter panel section, and the bumper and hood scoop up there. Um, and I just wanted to walk you guys through kind of how I go about sealing and just talk about that whole process. Some guys would mask off the fenders and do that whole thing. I don't think that's gonna be necessary because I'm going to use P30R, which is a red sealer. So realistically, I'm blending my fender for the door and for the hood and I'm spraying the bumper. So I might as well take my color practically over the whole fender. So I'm gonna spray sealer over the whole fender as well. Um, I'm gonna seal the bumper with two coats. This all just needs one coat. Really, I'm spraying sealer on this just to save on base coat because my sealer is just a little bit cheaper. Um, but the bumper is still, we tried to get them to get a new one, didn't go for it. So the bumper is still not perfect. Honestly, it's pretty rough. So I'm going to do two coats of sealer on that, hopefully smooth most of it out. Like I said, guys, this is a dealership car. We have to work with what we got. So I'm gonna go ahead and go mix sealer, get suited up. This has already been cleaned. All I need to do is take my blow gun, blow air over the whole thing and tack right. We'll be ready for sealer. So let me go do that, get suited and I'll see you guys in a second. All right guys, so I have sealer mixed up. That is P30R. Um, and then in my clear coat gun, I just put a little bit of reducer and this is going to melt any overspray edge where I don't, don't want to uh, do a full coat of sealer. I use just whatever reducer I use in my sealer instead of like a clear coat blender. Um, and that just makes it a smooth transition. But all I need to do at this point is just tack reg. So I'm gonna grab my little air gun, tack reg this whole thing down, and then we're gonna get to sealing. And I'll try to uh, bring you guys in a little bit closer it's hard with my camera because it, I don't have a super wide angle. Um, so I'm gonna get you guys as close as I possibly can and we'll get some sealer sprayed on this, all right? I might have to go mix up a little bit more sealer, but we're gonna find out. I don't know if it's gonna be really necessary to seal that when I didn't cut through and the only reason I'm painting that and so it matches the hood. And I've had a few, few people ask me on uh, the old TikTok if, uh, if I have a favorite dealer spray gun. And this 3300 bro is my jam. It's also excellent for base coat, so. Keep that in mind, you guys are looking at spray guns. These Segolas don't sleep on them. Ultra premium. They spray fantastic. And as a matter of fact, I have a new one coming here shortly. I got a uh, one of their mini extremes coming. And I am extremely excited about that. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. <laughs> This doesn't cover, I mean, it's a red sealer. It doesn't cover like, uh, like the gray shades, but it is doing its job. Let me get a little bit. I got to tip this bumper down. <laughs> so I can get to that section. Oof. These bumper stands make me nervous, man. You know, after I got some red on this, like the cover doesn't look horrible. I think after two coats of this, it's gonna look okay. I still would have rather uh, replaced this, but what are you gonna do? I'm gonna have to go mix up uh, probably another five or six ounces worth of sealer, but that's my first coat of sealer on this cover. 
the car is done i'm going to slam another coat of sealer on this and then i'll bring you guys and i'll walk around all this stuff and you can see the coverage and how this is honestly going to benefit me because my my solvent base coats i am spraying this in solvent my solvent really should cover over this in two coats but we'll see this is my first time using p30r i'm pretty excited about that i didn't even realize that red was a thing i feel like i read about it but I had never tried it. So I'm gonna go mix up a little bit more of this, get another coat on this, and I'll bring you guys back. All right guys, so here is that, that one coat of sealer. As you can see, fender to hood. It doesn't cover it instantly. Same with the doors and fender. You can see where I kind of blended it out onto that. It doesn't cover instantly, but anything that's going to help my solvent base coat cover is gonna be welcome. You can see this bumper. This is after two coats of sealer. It's still not perfect, but that'll do. That that looks a lot better than I was expecting it to. So I'm gonna go mix base coat. I'm gonna let this dry for probably 20 minutes and we'll get back in here. All right guys, so I have my base coat loaded up in my gun. Uh, real quick, before I go and spray base, uh, I wanted to talk about why I sealed all of this, kind of reiterate the idea um sealer does a couple of things it will help provide impact protection in this case because i used red it helps with my coverage um, and as well as that if there was any 400 grit scratch that i may have missed while prepping this smoothed all of that over so now my base coat has a nice clean slate to lay down over and that's why i did it and the reason why I didn't go all the way up the sail and up this rail is I just didn't want to waste that much sealer. I could just melt it in like I did and uh, I'm, I'm good. I can blend into this rail now. It's the original color paint and it's going to be an invisible repair. So I'm going to go tack rag that other side. I'm going to blow this whole thing down again with my little handy dandy blower and uh, we'll get ready to base coat this job. This took me a while to get ready for paint, but the actual painting process is pretty quick and painless. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna get this all tack ragged up and then I will uh, turn you guys back on when I'm ready to spray my base coat. All right, guys, here's the fun part, getting some color on this thing. Uh, and my gun flavor today, my typical choice, 4600. This has the HPLP cap in it and a 1.3 xl i really really like this 1.3 xl for solvent base coat it's right in the middle of a 1.3 and a 1.4 i think the fact that they negate it as an xl it's like a 1.35 but don't quote me on that i'm not 100 percent sure um, and as you guys seen before i started on that end so i could blend and chase my wet edge all the way around the car i'm going to do the exact same thing again um, let me get you guys set up on this end and we'll just start making our way across this car. I'm gonna leave this on uh, video mode so you guys can hear me at the same time. Um, but as I stated before, I am going to start at the bottom of these doors, blend my color out, and then just chase that wet edge all the way to the other side of the vehicle. Just makes it easier that I'm not dry spraying anything. Let's go ahead and get into it. And I'm using Sunfire Pro Premium Base Coat with a slow reducer. Not extra slow, but slow, which should be good. It's about oh, 70, 75 degrees in here. Not too hot, not too warm. But with slow reducer, it'll allow me to uh, get around this thing without everything completely drying and I'm guessing that I'm going to have two coats of base maybe two and a half and as well and I am walking the car you can split it up if you want to I'm just feeling like walking it today. 
I'll split it up when I go to clear coat though. Doing my blends at the back here. Yeah, this is covering pretty quick. So I think two coats and we should be good. Blend up that tail. And then we're just gonna taste this across the hood. Now, in order to avoid what this car came in for in the past, uh, that delamming clear, we are really gonna let this face go dry because I am not trying to be that guy. I, uh, I don't want this paint to peel right off the clear like it was. Okay, grab my other hose. Anyway, I was saying these hose hangs, they really, they keep your hose nice and clean, and I always know where it's hung up. Instead of just being tossed on the floor. I don't know if you guys could tell in that video, but this color covers pretty dang well. And we will uh, shut the lights off and check because it is red. And red has a tendency to be uh, transparent. And you guys see in the sealer, it just kind of the nature of the piece when you're dealing with red colors. All right. I honestly love jobs like this because uh, it kind of tests your abilities as a painter. It makes you really like apply what you've learned. You can see I'm kind of spraying this one a little bit from switching it up and not walking the entire way, but. And if you've never painted a red vehicle, by the time I'm done with this car, my eyesight is gonna be nothing but green. Every time I paint anything red, that seems to happen. I'm not sure what the technical term for that is, but. <laughs> you have a little spot back here. This thing is gonna be kind of interesting to get clear underneath the spoiler. All right, let's go ahead and do these other parts at the front now. All right. So now we need to get base coat on this uh, Rex front bumper here. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of this bumper, but I just paint them. And I'm gonna do just a, a light coat. I did uh, put a bunch of sealer on this, two coats, so I don't wanna cause any lifting. And if I pound it too hard with that first coat of solvent base coat, I could lift the sealer right off of the panel, so I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna do an ever so slight coat. And not wet it out too much. That's probably the number one mistake that I see new technicians make, or uh, like uninformed people, is they'll spray sealer on something and just whack a whole bunch of face coat over top of it. And then it wrinkles up like alligator skin and they're posting on Facebook saying, why did this happen? Don't rush it. I mean, it's no different than uh, why this car was in there in the first place or in here. And that's because it was rushed. And I don't think I'm gonna film every cut of base coat. This bumper, I have some dark spots that were cut throughs that are gonna take a few coats. I'm not gonna film every single coat of base on this one. I will uh, probably just bring you guys back when I get everything all base coated and show you guys the clear coat process. Cause there's nothing really to spraying this base besides uh, making sure you're covered. All right. Same thing with this hood scoop. 
And I did mix up a bunch of bass in the mix room, so I'm gonna need to go get a refill real quick. And uh, by the time I get this all refilled, this stuff should be pretty much tacked off and ready to roll. So I'm gonna go refill my cup. I'm gonna bring you guys back when I'm ready for clear coat. All right guys, so that's all of my base coat done. I already used my sun gun, checked all of my coverage, and it's pretty much perfect. So I, to avoid the same thing happening again, I'm gonna run this through like a five to 10 minute bake, get all the solvents out of this base coat, make sure it's good and dry before I go and clear coat it. But I'll walk you guys around, let you see how smooth this stuff laid out. I'm telling you, if you spray solvent base coat, check these 4600 out. Personally, the HPLP cap is by far my favorite. And uh, 1.3 XL, it just, it speaks for itself. It lays stuff down so nice. So I'll let you guys check this out and then we'll be ready for clear coat. This is almost good and dry. It's nice and flashed off. You can see. I have that little spot up there that I had the base. So I just basically put color on the whole quarter. This side's nice and flash. This bumper, honestly guys, this came out way better than I thought it would. It's still not perfect, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna hit the bake cycle, let this stuff really flash off good, and I'll bring you back for clear. All right guys, all of that prep work, all of that time has led to right now, and that's clear coat time. You like that phone? <laughs> um, I have DC 5020 overall clear mixed up. Like usual, my go-to 4600 digital Titania Pro Cap 1.2. Um, I'm gonna literally follow the same formula I did when I was base coating. I'm gonna start on that end and then just chase it all the way around. I'm gonna do two, two coats. I'm gonna tack rag the rail. I'm not gonna worry about tack ragging the base coat because it uh, looks pretty damn clean. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and I'll bring you guys in close and we'll get this thing wrapped up. All right guys, I know it's gonna be hard to see, but I'm gonna split this up just so I have less chance of uh, dry spots. I have this set at 30 PSI. We're gonna knock this out real quick. With this gun, it should be a fairly fast process. I can move pretty, pretty quick. But if you're gonna split up clear coating or base coating, I highly, highly suggest overlapping on body lines because what can happen is you can get build up on these body lines and if you've never done that it's a huge pain in the ass to fix all right see how i'm overlapping that i don't want build up on this edge so i'm going right past it So far, man, this thing came out super nice. Whoever buys this, I think, will be pretty happy with that. the paint job on this thing, at least. The same thing, I'm gonna overlap, pick up my wet edge down here, and I'll overlap the fender when I get to that point. Like so. And splitting it up like this just makes it easier to uh, not get a dry spot. It is tricky though, when you go back to overlap where you bypass the body line, make sure you're not going back too far because then you'll end up with a run there and that just opens up another can of worms.
I think spraying hoods has to be one of my favorites because uh, you can absolutely just lay it down. What are you doing here? Reaching across fenders kind of sucks, but. All right, I'm gonna go swap hoses and move you guys. Pick up that wet edge again. When you're clearing, you really want to move quick. Especially when you have a large section like this. Because all of this stuff is going to be starting to pack up pretty quickly. And I'm going to do two coats. Do a clear coat. And I did run this through a 10 minute bake cycle prior to uh, spraying clear, simply to avoid what happened with this car the last time with their base coat. What I suspect, suspect happened the last time where the base coat wasn't dry enough to be cleared. I just didn't want that to happen to me. So running it through a quick bake cycle, that just ensures that I get all of those solvents out and I shouldn't have any problems. Right. See these knee pads in this in my suit, when you gotta get down like that, there's such a difference. You don't go home hurting too bad, you know? I'm not ready to feel like an old guy yet. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I sprayed both coats of clear pretty wet. I spray it how I want it to look. That's how I was taught, so I just stick with that, you know. Hasn't failed me yet. You just gotta make sure you're observing proper flash times even in clear coat. Like I said, getting under this spoiler is kind of tricky. Got it. Let's do this bumper and this hood scoop, and then we can lay on a second coat. All right, I gotta swap out. I mixed up 60 ounces and I just used, oh, 26 on the body. I'm thinking that I might be able to get the whole thing done. I should be, should be able, we'll see what happens. If I have to mix a little bit more to do a second on these, these things, that's okay. Not the end of the world. <clears throat> Anytime you guys are going to spray bumper covers, please, for the love of God, make sure that you do your edges first because I tell you what, the number one failure that I see a lot of new apprentices fall into is uh, missing an edge. And like even with color, it just, <laughs> it's such an easily avoidable problem then you don't have to come up with a solution for like cutting it in because that's never fun and then having to redo a whole bumper to fix an insurance job always sucks so use your color light check your coverage buy a lumen light if you want uh, to see it while, while it's happening if I had one for my pagolas I would absolutely have it on here It's supposed to be coming. I'm told it's coming, so I'm super excited for that. Y'all have never tried them? Bro, they are pretty damn awesome. 
especially for colors like this that are pretty transparent like this bumper I had to check quite a few times with my sun gun but with the luma light you can just see straight away if it's covering it or not the little, little things are stupid bright and the new one's supposed to be brighter Right, this little hood scoops right up. I kind of, I just threw this hood scoop in as a freebie. Uh, mainly because these always are faded. They don't match. They just look like poo. All right, there's one coat on everything, guys. I am going to go ahead and smash a second coat on the body. And I'll bring you back when this job done and show you how this STI came out, all right? Catch you in a minute. All right, guys, so that's job done. I've got two coats of clear that I've... It took about 10 minutes in between coats. Uh, this took roughly 75 ounces of clear coat to get two coats on everything. The bumper cover honestly came out way better than I thought it would. Uh, but like I stated before, Sunfire Pro premium base coat, just solvent and Dimension DC5020 overall clear. Um, I used the slow reducer with that as well. And really, I'm not even gonna bake this. I'm gonna just let this booth run for another five, 10 minutes, shut it off, and let it air dry overnight. And it should stay looking beautiful. Um, I hope you guys learned something today, uh, whether it be from the sealer, to how to base, to clear. I'm trying to make these videos as educational as I can and kind of let you guys hear my thoughts as I am spraying and my thought process on why I do things the way I do uh, because I know for me watching other guys videos such as Brian for Paint Society, The Gunman, when I was first starting out doing this just hearing their thoughts it all made, made total sense and helped me to kind of make decisions throughout my day and along each project that I get in the booth. I hope that made sense. Uh, but anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like, consider subscribing. I'm gonna try to drop a new video every single Friday. That is my goal. Um, I will have a new video coming out here shortly, maybe on Wednesday, of an intro to a new project that I uh, drug home from Minnesota. If you follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you know what it is, but it'll be a little bit more in depth than what I've posted on there. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. And I guess without further ado, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching, see ya.